Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks gameplay centered around a big team battle capture the flag game on Ragnarok. Now, I was playing with a few of my teammates here. I'm going to rush top middle for the Spartan Laser, but unfortunately we are facing some pretty good players. Um, one of them has a sniper rifle and he blames uh, both Mullet Man and I um, for that Spartan Laser. Eventually our team does get it, but even our Hard Light Shield guy right here dies from a grenade that the enemy player expertly threw behind his shield. That's what you want to do when you're facing someone with a Hard Light Shield, throw a grenade right behind them. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about in this gameplay overall is not necessarily how uh, many kills I get or that sort of thing. That's not what this whole gameplay is about. I want to talk about pushing lanes, okay? Similar to uh, as you can see, the enemy map is being very aggressive, pushing top middle right here. Um, pushing lanes, what I'm referring to when I say that, are pushing sides of the map. And what you're going to be seeing me do is pushing this right-hand side quite a bit. Literally where I just zoomed with my screen right now, this side of the map. Um, when you are blue team, um, holding machine gun turret is um, much more advantageous, I believe, because you have more angles and more sight ranges on the enemy um, side overall. Like guys, if we go over to Pelican side, um, when you are red team, holding the Pelican is equally as important as that side because if you'll notice, you can see all over the front of the enemy's base. If you're over here, you can see some of the red team's base, but it's not necessarily as advantageous as holding um, the machine gun turret. Now, I would say that both sides are equally important, but all I can do, I'm just one guy, so all I can do is focus on one side, so that's what I'm going to be doing during this game. Now, I did get the call up that that guy was up there in that position. Um, don't think that I just suddenly knew that that guy was there. Um, and this is, again, very lucky, but my teammates helped me. I called that guy out and said, hey, look, I need help over here. Um, the guy light rifling me from top middle, and they helped me clean him up. It just goes to show you do want to be shooting at people even though you think you may die. Right here I do get the Mantis to um, keep its shields low. Once again I do call out to my teammates right here. Uh, that's why I love editing um, games right after they happen because I know and remember exactly what occurred in them. Um, my teammate said right here, hey he's dead. He picked up the turret, I don't know why. Um, and he, they killed him off. So right here I'm just sorting trying to hold machine gun turret area. Or again, why we're just calling it that, because the machine gun turret does spawn right here. The guy just picked that up and died with it, like I said. Um, and I'm going to be trying to push across. Now, I want to keep the man's shield weak, and I'm, I shoot this guy. And why am I shooting so cross-range? Well, look at that assist that just popped up. I called him out to my teammate over here, um, uh, Mojo, who's in the enemy cave right now. And I called, hey, look, there's a guy one shot heading to their cave. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go get him. Um, now... Uh, one of the enemy players, let me check his name real fast here. Now one of the en enemy players, Eating Machine 50, does end up embarrassing me um, a little later on this film. I'll talk about that just for a few seconds later on. Um, I kill him right, kill an enemy player right there. Um, and this is the jump I really wanted to show you guys. What I just did. Now you see how there's this, uh, like this little ledge right here? This is actually different from the other... Um, parts of this rock and it makes a little nice little shelf you can sprint up up onto. And there's other little parts I'll show you later on in the film that you can jump up onto. But I want you to notice how high I am right now and how I still haven't encountered the kill zone yet. Okay? Notice how I'm literally peeking up above this rock in the kill the soft kill zone that counts down ten seconds till you're dead. It doesn't extend um, as far over here. Now if you go over here um, you're definitely going to encounter that kill zone. You're going to have to drop to about like right here to get away from it. But it has a pretty extensive range up here. And it's really nice for just calling out enemy locations and providing a presence. Right here, I thought Drew, my teammate who was in... Uh, oh yeah, and here's where I get Ferris. Basically, um, what I wanted to talk about here is the range of the DMR, which the enemy player is using. Now, you may be rolling your eyes going, okay, you're just trying to explain away your death. But I do legitimately want to point this out. The DMR's range does not require you to zoom, okay, at this distance. It's very nice. Where I, I had to zoom from up there because the battle rifle's range, and what I mean by range is um, it's effective bullet penetration um, when you're not zooming, okay? It's effective accuracy, should I say. Um, the BR is, because it fires three shots in 
one trigger pull, you do need to have your reticle on your opponent for longer to make sure those three bullets all hit your enemy opponent. With a DMR, obviously, you don't have to do that. It's just one trigger pull. And because it has a little bit longer of an effective range when you're not zoomed, basically this guy didn't have to zoom at all. And even though he reloaded, he was able to um, take me out because I missed a few clutch shots at the end there. And that's just how it goes. Um, I'll just rewind, uh, just fast forward, sorry, fast this part. And that's just how it goes. I mean, later on this film, I embarrass him actually right um, here. Um, you really can't get yourself down on that. I mean, even he, I think he does, I, yeah, I zoomed, I fast forwarded through it, but he does actually melee my body a little bit, and that's okay. But moving back to the commentary, you can see I just rape him. Um, absolutely, his you know butthole was expanded so far. He didn't even know what to do. Um, he just has no you know he's not a good player is what I'm trying to say. Like don't get down if some random guy just happens to become a pro player and five shot you. Um, it's not because they're really good. It's normally just because they're getting lucky. Um, now right here again, I'm just providing enemy. Wow, I got playing there. Holy crud! Just trying to survive, provide some support on the right for my teammates. I'm going to fast forward through this death a little bit. Um, Mojo asked me to get on the Mongoose, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to sort of push into the right-hand side of the enemy base here, just fast forwarding. Now, we'd like to say, why do I get off here? Why not, you know, go up to the enemy base a little bit closer? Well, because this guy is not moving doesn't mean I don't need to take care of him. And I want you to notice, he's still not moving, still not moving. Oh, finally he just starts to side to side start playing again. You see what I mean? Like, you cannot... Um, basically you cannot expect or think that enemy players are not playing because they easily could be playing. Now right here, I go for the flag because I'm being shot um, by this carbine player who just spawned in their water cave. And um, this is how you want to be pulling flags out of the enemy base if you can. Now unfortunately there's a bunch of enemy players there, but later on I show expertly how to do this. You do not need to go into the bottom of the enemy base. In fact, there is little to no point to do so. I will repeat again. There is no need to go into the bottom of the enemy base when you're trying to pull a flag out. You just need to run up the front of the base. This is something I've been wanting to tell people for a really long time and actually show them. There will be several examples of this in this video. After watching this video, I hope that you, if you ever play with me, understand and realize that running up the front of the enemy base is much better of a strategy. Um, it, I, I've tried it extensively both ways. In fact, I didn't even know you could run up the front of the enemy base, embarrassingly enough, even in Halo 3, where the map was called Valhalla. Um, the, this map is a remake of a map called Valhalla from Halo 3, also a very good map. And I didn't even know in that, um, in Halo 3, that you could run up the front of the enemy base. I had no idea. Um, but you can. Um, in Halo 4 it's a little bit easier because you have sprint, obviously. Now I called out to, again, my teammate Mojo, who's over there in the enemy caves. Hey, look, that guy has saw and he just killed me. And I want you to notice how Mojo decides to sprint away from, you see, he's now top middle right now with me. Um, he sprint, tries to spin away from into the cave and he's still watching the cave, making sure that that guy doesn't go anywhere. Unfortunately, he gets taken out by the sniper in the base, and I do too. And I'd like to uh, say something right here for a second. Um, I have not seen our sniper do much work throughout the beginning of this game, okay? And what I mean by that is, um, I haven't seen him snipe anybody uh, of note worthy. You know, I haven't, I just haven't seen, up until this point, I haven't seen our sniper work very much. So, what I said literally right here in the game to my teammates was, guys, whoever has a sniper, that this is just embarrassing, okay? You should have sniped their sniper a long time ago. The reason why is because when I have the sniper, I always am like sitting, sitting right here, you know, peeking up and looking exactly where they sniped us from, which is on their sides of their base, just making sure their sniper doesn't ever have a clear angle. I cannot tell you how many snipers I have out sniped on Ragnarok. It is unbelievable. And I would like to point out, if I may further note, the next game we played was a game of Infinity, Big Team Infinity Slayer on Ragnarok. Guess what I did? I timed sniper. I said, I'm getting sniper. I got four sniper rifles, one binary, and one beam. 19 kills, zero deaths, eight assists, perfection. I've already maxed out the perfection commendation, 
then I decided to do that because I was sick of what happened right now in the game where I got blamed again by the enemy sniper who still hasn't got, got taken out. I killed the enemy sniper at least three or four times in that game. That was the last game I played. It was actually the game after this one. That was the last game I played before starting to make this video. This goes to show that when you have the sniper, you really need to be watching for the enemy sniper. Um, right here, I'm just, again, I'm pushing the left lane. I'm pushing the left lane. I'm not trying to overextend. I'm just trying to provide my teammates with support. Um, and right here, notice how I don't just hold down the trigger. I pulse the trigger of the saw. That's really what you want to be doing to retain your accuracy. And here's what I'm talking about. I want you to watch this very closely, what I do here. Instead of just jumping into the enemy base, which I want you to look at my radar right now. You know how people are using camo, okay, and a bunch of random scrambled dots appear on your radar when pe a person is using camo? Then why is this guy, an enemy player, using camo with a shotgun right now and not appearing on my radar at all? And by the way, he was using camo even before I got up to the base, so I should have definitely been able to see him by now. This is called camo glitching, okay? It is a random glitch that occurs in the game. I've researched it extensively on the forums. There's no way to trigger it. In other words, the people who are doing it don't know that they're doing it. If they're not hacking or I don't even know why people use the term hacking when it comes to this because it's just a random glitch that occurs in the game. It's glitches like this when I wish that Halo 4 had had a beta because glitches like this would have been found and fixed much more often. Um, it, again, that's just my personal opinion. You can see my teammate got the flag. I wait. Um, pull, pull down the trigger there, making sure to get the double kill, grab the flag, and lift out. And that's exactly what you want to be doing. Now it's just a matter of my teammates grabbing the flag over and over again because it takes uh, 25 to 30 seconds to reset the flag. You do not want to do what the enemy player did and randomly try to jump out of the side of the base. Always lift the flag top center via the front man cannon. Unless, unless, uh, Unless their Mantis is like sitting right here waiting for you to lift out to the front and all of the enemy players on the opposite side, then you can lift out the side. But always lift. Never do anything else. I am like, I've played CTF so much, I cannot tell you how many players I, we get frustrated at because they try, oh, let's get on a mongoose and get out of the base. That doesn't work because enemy players are spawning all over you. It takes 30 seconds to reset the flag once you pull it out of the front of the enemy base. You see, you see how 34 seconds, okay, for these flags to reset. We can get there in 34 seconds, but if you drop the flag in the enemy base while trying to escape on a mongoose, there's no guarantee we're going to be able to do that. Just uh, hanging back, trying to protect my flag, flag carrier. Um, notice how I don't go back to my base with my flag carrier. There's no need. I'm just trying to kill people before they start shooting him. Really good saw, saw on my part here. Just really trying to take out some of the enemy players. Um, I pick up more saw ammo um, and get the sniper rifle right here. That guy's not playing. Almost not my teammate. Thankfully, I don't. Um, I do ping that shot off the enemy Mantis because we just want to lower his shields. Um, that, you, you see what I just did there? You see what I just flipping did there? I looked at the left side of the enemy base, right there, because this is where the enemy snipes. Okay, they, they, they oh, I'm going to crouch up right on this thing and be sneaky and get a viewpoint of everybody. That's exactly why I looked there. Okay, when you are the sniper, always look in those directions. It is crucial. And I, again, that's why, well, that's why I said to my teammates, you guys have got to snipe better. You know, whoever has a sniper right now is just embarrassing. Okay, because... You can snipe the enemy sniper, or at least make sure that they don't have one, or have one and play for very long. Now this, once again, this is how you want to be maneuvering into the enemy base. Now, I do go up to the top of the enemy base, but I want you to notice how I start receiving fire um, from the side, and I start, okay, so though what this means is that they've spawned um, in the water over here, which is really unfortunate, but that's how it is. You, I was trying to get over here and like hang on this shelf. You can sort of also dodge enemy fire. That's that's how you want to determine which side you sprint up on. Is if you pushed from Water Cave and killed everyone on Water Cave, you 
probably want to sprint up onto this side. If you've killed everyone over in here, you want to sprint up on this side, obviously, because you can use this little barrier as um, pr protective cover from people spawning on the opposite side. So I want you to notice what I do here instead, using my Thrust Pack expertly to get away. I don't know how I survived this. Um, I'm going to be honest, I get one shot throughout most of this thing. I want you to notice how I'm firing before the enemy even comes around the corner. And notice how I pick up that kill. You really want to be doing that when you're in this situation. When you have no shields, you need to start firing, even though ne no, not necessarily everyone's around the corner. My grenade did pick up that kill, I believe. And then I get the triple kill and the overkill. Um, I would like to state um, that this is really, really lucky. Um, I want you to notice um, the insanely low IQ level of this enemy player who, while I'm one shot, comes in and misses a melee and misses the next melee. I mean, I don't even know. I, I really don't even know um, what is going through your mind. Unfortunately, my teammate does steal the kill. Tacular, that's okay. Oh, I did I did tell him that, but that's okay. Um, the thrust pack, as you can see, does not help you um, in your jumps. It only makes you go faster along the direction you're already traveling. Not many people know that from the thruster pack. Um, it doesn't help you jump farther. Right here, it's definitely okay that I die because we pulled out the enemy flag, and I did get the wingman, which was my goal there. I want to spawn back on our side so I can help our flag carrier back to our base and just make sure he's going to have a safe route here. Um, my teammates also, I would like to shout out during this film, do an excellent job of stopping the um, enemy flag carriers who lift out the side of our base, as you just saw there on the right. Um, now right here, you may think, okay, why in the world, you know, what the heck, why are you staying right here? You can, you can pause for a second right here. When you're ahead of the enemy team and you're just sitting here, you don't want to die. And I, yeah, my, my teammates are all like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, I'm waiting for my shields to regenerate. And I want you to notice also, um, I called out that enemy player. I know this enemy player with the DMR is over here on this area, okay? He's over here on this general area, all right? I know that's where I was receiving fire, okay? So I called him out, and they said he's dead. I want you to notice right here how the enemy player with the DMR is not dead, and he's still pinging me. Now, this just comes with experience. The amount of my shields going down, the, the sound that the bullet makes when it's pinging off my shields, that is definitely a DMR. It's not anything else. That just comes from experience of playing the game. So I jump up here, cap the flag, and I'm immediately going to go take care of that enemy DMR player over on the machine gun turret on the right here, pushing this lane. And you see, you see this guy who is dead, and they're like, oh, my teammates are like, oh yeah, he's cleaned up. Uh, he's not cleaned up. This guy's doing, and by the way, this is the same guy who out DMR'd me, um, or out shot me um, earlier on. Uh, and so I'm pushing the right-hand lane with my friend here. Um, we do end up killing him. Now pushing into the water cave area. I don't, not quite into the water cave, but um, this is also a good place to hold and just to watch the enemy spawns up here. I do call out that to my teammates. Hey, there's one guy over here. And I just sort of pause here and we're trying to help Drew, my teammate, um, make sure that he doesn't necessarily die. Unfortunately, he does. I was actually watching that, wondering how he died. Thankfully, he didn't say anything in the game when he died. Um, he just... Now, yeah, right here is really something to point out. Um, I use sensitivity of four, okay? With look sensitivity of bumper jumper. One of the reasons you want to use not sensitivity of two or three, in my personal opinion, it doesn't apply to everyone, but in my personal opinion, is because of kills like this, okay? When someone is going through the air at such high speeds, it is very difficult to keep track of them. And I want you to notice not how all my shots hit that guy, but how incredibly I ac accurate I am for such an impossible, you know, angle to shoot at someone. Um, that just comes from using force sensitivity for years. I've used it since the end of Halo uh, 3, and I've used Bumper Jumper since, since the end of Halo 3 as well. And I probably will um, continue on Bumper Jumper when I play Titanfall. Now here I do ping the enemy sniper. I know that that guy that I just shot has a sniper, so I'm backing up. Now I want you to notice how the kill, uh, the kill, soft kill zone is uh, activating right here when I'm standing right here. But it doesn't activate when you're standing right here. Um, it's really strange. I, I don't know why they chose to do it that way, how it doesn't extend all the way to this little ledge, but that's just how it is. Again, you can use it very useful. Notice how I see now I'm not in the soft kill zone. 
Now see, see how I had still six seconds left? Just because you come out of a soft kill zone doesn't mean the timer resets for your death. You have to wait several seconds for it to come go back to 10 seconds for your soft kill zone. Um, so don't keep jumping. And you see how now it's 10 seconds and it's counting down from 10 seconds? That's that's what I'm talking about. Now this player is uh, not very competent. I, I kind of wonder if this is the same guy who tried to come in at me behind the base. So I take him out and grab his DMR and trade it for my BR because I'm running low on ammo. Um, my teammate does a great job of pulling the flag out right here. Um, I see the sticky death spawn, but I do get pinged. I think that there's a guy over here um, in the cave, but uh, now he appears on my radar. Um, he was actually further into the cave, and I didn't realize it. Now, I want you to notice what I'm doing right here. I'm just crouching. That's literally all I'm doing. This player, even though he saw me go over here, and he, he even threw a grenade at me, he is just oblivious. I mean, I want you to watch him. He, he doesn't even know I'm here. Okay. And this is the same Eating Machine 50 who out DMR'd me earlier in the game. You have to realize that people have such low attention spans in this game. They're not truly paying attention to what's going on. If you can slow down the game specifically around this water cave area, you can brutally demolish some people like I do right here. Like, you can seriously destroy some people. Now, right here I do get grenaded. Very good grenade as the teammate. Enemy player uh, does grenade me. Um, around the rock there. That was a very well placed grenade. Um, and this game is going to be wrapping up um, quite shortly here um, as we make it back into our base with the third and final flag. We weren't facing terrible people, um, and, but this is one of the rare games where I did multiple things at once and I held some really good positions. Um, I got a pretty decent KD as well and used the battle rifle for uh, on a long range map. You know, normally I'm using the light rifle or something like that. Um, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this capture the flag game on Ragnar. I hope it helped you understand how to capture flags a little bit better, a little bit more, um, and everything of that nature. Um, subscribe for more Halo 4 content, like the video, it helps out a lot, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.